Hey everyone, today we're going to play with axle shafts again, specifically for the MR2 Spider and the 2AR swap. Alright, so let's solve another hurdle that people are having with the MR2 Spider swap. Um, the big problem here, these axle shafts, by requiring remanufactured axles, it makes it so that it's, it's just one step more complicated. Uh, their, the quality on remanufactured axles is sometimes hit and miss, and sometimes instead they'll just ship you a new axle made for the same application that you ordered the axle from, but <laughs> while the splines here and the splines here will match, the splines inside this joint here won't, and worse, um, this joint here is usually smaller than this joint. I, I think it's just the way that they, they commonize the applications, you end up with a different size joint. Would work just fine in the original application, doesn't work for us. So that was on my to-do list to fix this, but a customer reached out to me and said, these three axles here, and the actual part numbers, if you can't read them there, are in the description, um, reached out to me and said, hey, I was able to take these, put them together, and make axle shafts that fit. So today, uh, before I just go and tell everybody, hey, it works, <laughs> I refuse to do that without checking it myself. So that's what we're doing today. We're checking it. Now, unfortunately, I lost the instructions. Um, but this should be relatively easy to figure out. These two are uh, spares that I have right now. If it's not inherently obvious just by the, the length of the axles, if they're close or something, then I'll bring the car in and we'll test it there. But either way, at the end, we will test fit these on the car to confirm that they're good, confirm the plunge travel, that there's enough there's enough travel going in and the joint's not going to come apart. So yeah, first things first, let's, let's get these out of the way and unbox these things. All right, we got these out. And first thing that's obvious is this one here. That's a small spline. So we're obviously not using this. We've got the large inner spline on this one and obviously the long axle shaft. So that means we're definitely using this one. And given that we're making small axle shafts, I'm gonna go ahead and guess that this one gets thrown out. Uh, but let's, uh, let's just continue taking them apart and see where that leads us. Conveniently, now I did write the numbers on here, the part numbers, so I don't forget which one went to what, but they've also labeled them from the factory. And since this part here will stay with the outer. We never take the outer joints apart. It'll actually remain properly labeled, I think. And I can tell the 8154 is the big spline, 8156 is the small spline, and 8246 is the long one. All right, we're going to start with this one here, the 8246. You'll notice the tulip on here actually has the three lobes that is more traditional of OEM type axles, whereas the other two are perfectly round. Oh, here, we'll get this one in frame too. Um, so that means not only do we need this, but we need to keep the boot. So we're gonna take them apart one at a time and uh, salvage those pieces. Now, unfortunately, and my customer actually warned me about this, these axles appear to be captured. So, so, we need to figure out what is capturing them and release that. That's annoying and not a big deal all at the same time. You can see, let me see if I can get that to where you can see it. Do you see right here? Let me see if I can get that to where you can see it. Uh, right here, it's ever so slightly peened over. So I guess, I'm wondering if I just want to try peening them back the other way or if I want to just grind those flush. If I grind them, I'm committing to fully cleaning the inside of this out. So, but that's also some really hard material. So I don't think it's gonna just come apart. All right, let's see how it responds to being. I think that's gonna work, I'm just gonna go actually flatten the end on that.
Ta-da! All right. Now, this we keep. We also have to take that joint apart and keep it with that. Oh, yay. This one was not peened over. That's great. So this one with the small spline is useless to us. Now we still have to take that off. Okay, and this joint is one we will not be using. All right, so we're gonna save this one. And I believe we have to separate this one and save both halves. All right, now the shorter one is on the left side. So we're gonna grab the shortest one, right? Which is gonna be 8156 instead of 8154. And we're gonna put it with the large spline outer. So before we get too far, let's check that the spline matches. Okay, that's good. So that means we need a round boot for that one. You know what, I guess this one started with a round boot, so you wouldn't have had to take that one out to begin with. But by putting it in here, we get extra grease out of this hole and make sure we can make a mess again. All right, and grab your uh, CV joint grease. Now this stuff here, this is gonna be for street applications. As we figured out with the other explorations we've done, this uh, Redline CV2 grease here, this thing's the, the right stuff if you're gonna be really beating the snot out of it. But I wouldn't spend this money on a streetcar. Looks like it's gonna need gentle tap. There we go. All right, so we need the boot clips on there, but we're just gonna set that aside. We're gonna get the stuff for the clips in just a minute. Now we're gonna grab the next one, which is gonna be the medium length outer shaft. And we're gonna grab the long inner. Now, since we're grabbing that long inner, that means we need the proper boot that goes with it, right? Because of these recesses. Oh, well, well, damn it. That's, that's actually exactly what I was expecting. That's what I had found previously when I had done these. Um, oh, I wonder if this is how he did it. The joint is actually the same size. Oh, I'm not sure I'm really comfortable with that idea. Let me go grab some measuring tools. I'll be right back. All right, so before I measure that, <laughs> check this out. This lovely, yeah crusty box here that looks like it's been sitting around for a while. It's 23rd of April, 2018. Um, this is an axle that I got the first time I tried to get this track motive stuff to work. Um, I was super happy with the construction of the track motive stuff. I just couldn't find something that worked, but check this out. So as you can see, the axle, this is the one that was originally recommended, but this one here is shorter. But if we look at this, this is the one that I, I use. So you can see, you see the, the seal rides right here. This actually ends up being further out. This is actually the correct dimension. And um, yeah, let's, let's give that a shot. Hopefully the joint inside of here is going to be the same size as uh, this one. Ow. 
Oh, come on. So, as you can see, <laughs> those are also peened over, um, which is annoying, but not the end of the world. I had already clearanced those previously in order to take it apart. All right, and let's see. Oh! sad trombone and actually yeah you can you can see that we don't need it we don't need to be able to we don't need any fine measuring instrument there we can see that is smaller but if we pull from the other inner yeah all right all right let me back up a step let me go get something to measure those and by the way this has not been calibrated in a long time so take this exact measurement with a grain of salt and it's also cold as heck out here it would not have been calibrated at this temperature so but it'll be just fine for taking relative measurements all right so 1.4 1.450 and 5 tenths. Let's check the other one. So this is a perfect example actually of why I want to keep the bearings with the proper joint. These, it tends to be difficult to grind stuff like this to a very, very precise size. So instead what they do is they just grind a whole bunch of them and they try to aim for the same size and then they bend them. And you can see this one here is five ten thousandths of an inch bigger than that one. And in some conditions, um, five ten thousandths of an inch is, I mean, it's a world apart. It makes a huge difference. Now, what I don't know, I, I know that like on a standard six ball CV, uh, either cross cut or the word that I refuse to pronounce because somebody's going to call me out on saying it wrong. This type. Um, I know I know that clearance is there. Five ten thousandths of an inch would matter. But what I don't know is how much clearance these normally run to begin with. So let's see. Which one? I think it's that one, but let me... Yeah, this one fits the spline just fine. So let's measure the clearance in the race that it was mated with to begin with because if this thing's got five thou clearance then taking half a tenth out of it is not going to be a big deal if it's got one thou clearance then i'm not going to feel comfortable taking half of that clearance away from it Oh, wow. You know what? Without being super precise about it, there's 18 thousandths of an inch clearance between the OD of this and, well, uh, I don't know, I forget which one's which, but the OD of this and the appropriate race that it's designed for. So, given that, I'm gonna go ahead and say, I'm not super comfortable with the idea of separating these, so running the bearing with the one that it wasn't ground for. But I also don't think that we're going to run into any issues at all, because taking half a thousandth of an inch when your clearance is 18 to begin with is, it's just not going to matter. All right. Let me get this stuff out of here and let's put our axle together. All right, so what we ended up with here is two axles that have the correct splines, but are both slightly longer than what we started with before. I know that 
one side slightly longer is actually going to be a very good thing because we were we weren't over traveled but we were definitely further out on the joint than we should be um and on the other side well we'll just have to find out if it's a problem or not so let's get the car in here and we're now in the next day um, i went ahead and confirmed on my documentation the right side shaft is the shorter shaft um, and i also measured these diameters here these diameters are exactly the same as the other one so really the only difference on the outboard here is that this seal diameter is longer that shouldn't cause us any issues um, i mean the extra length might so we're just gonna see uh, let's go ahead and install it Yep, I'm pretty sure. Pretty sure it's a transmission we're bottoming out on. Not the bearing. Ah, oh, damn it. So it's probably difficult to tell, but that joint is not, the bearing is not bottoming out in here. All right, so as you can see under there, this shaft is definitely too long. Um, I did put some grease on here to be able to tell where the interference was, and it's right at this shoulder here. Um, in fact, here, let me show you. You can see the grease here was moved, whereas up here it wasn't touched. And that's just a quick way to tell where the interference was. Um, what I did do is I took the um, one here that I had bought way back in the day to originally try to find a solution. This fits just fine. Um, the reason that I didn't end up using this the first time, well, first is this CV is smaller than the CVs for all the other ones. But also at the time I was using the Scion TC bracket. This fits with the 2010 Camry bracket. Um, and the whole length, everything is just perfect. So I went ahead and used Rock Auto. I dumped all of the, uh, ends up being 50 Toyota axles that Track Motive makes. And then searching by picture, I isolated down to the ones that look like, actually, no, not like this, that look like this. So um, round, round CV at the end here and the shorter stub and uh, it also gives the spline count, so a 24 spline inner. And I also search for the ones that have the 26 spline outer in case I need to mix and match further. But I only found one that I don't have currently in my shop, the uh, TO8270. So I went ahead and ordered one. It'll be here in a few days. Hopefully I'll be able to give you guys an update on how this goes together. Until then, we're still stuck with the remanufactured axles. Uh... Other than that, the other reason I've got this car in here is I actually want to make upgraded axles using Porsche 930 CV joints to use in, because this is a race car and these street axles just aren't beefy enough as it is. Um, so stay tuned. Hopefully in the next couple of days, I'll be releasing a video with that process. All right. Have a good one, guys. We'll see you later.